Hey guys, this is Moshe, the Electric Israeli, and I want to share with you two very short videos, uh, an interview that was done with Bob Lutz. One of them, the first one, is about uh, the reason why the Chevy Volt was came to, to exist back in 2010, I believe, and then also the future of mobility. So let's watch the first one. It's really, really short, and then I'll tell you what I think about it. Just stay tuned. Think back to that era. Um... Toyota was the darling of the media, the American public. Uh, they, Toyota has created the Prius. Toyota is light years ahead. Uh, the General Motors people are all brain dead. All they keep doing is internal combustion engines. If only we had the smart people in Detroit that Toyota has, the noble Japanese who are not motivated by profit. They're motivated only for the good of society. I mean, it was, it was, I'd say it was enough to make you sick. And I thought the only way to stop this is to leapfrog them and do something beyond what Toyota has done. That was, I will tell you, that was my number one inspiration. If we could make some money doing it, that would be even nicer. But to me, it was a, the Volt was something like the Dodge Viper was at Chrysler to give people a new perception of the company. So obviously, uh, what I think reveals uh, uh, and this uh, in the answer of Bob Lutz about the reaction to Toyota, like Toyota is like, uh, you know, the, the no all, um, you know, car, car maker. And the reason that uh, Chevy Volt came out is like as a reaction, we're going to one up you, which means there's no thought of we are now moving, transitioning from gas to plug-in hybrid to pure electric. Just, oh, they're making this. They are the big shots in the neighborhood and we're going to show them that we can do much better than them and therefore we're going to create this car. And, and that's sad and pathetic. Now, uh, Bob Lutz is, uh, you know, um, a climate change denier. And I don't want to have this discussion of this conversation in videos like this, but you just see that the uh, attitude was, okay, we're going to stick it to Toyota because that's what they do. Now, in this next video, also very short, really interesting thought about the future of mobility. So let's watch it and then I'll give you my reaction in automotive news uh, about the end of an era sort of for for the car the the era of the automobile yeah, uh, talk a little I bit about it, that I call it the party's over yeah, right I, yeah well I mean said but true uh, I think the automobile as we know it is an object of desire and lust and important brands prestige brands sporty brands and everything I I see it fading into the past gradually, hopefully, and transition will be complete long after I'm gone, but I think we are entering a, a time when the automobile is going to be, it's going to cease to be a human-driven instrument of pleasure, and it will become a highly efficient, self-driving uh, method for efficient surface transportation. And how fast do you see these changes coming? Well, it's in the next five years, for sure, we will see the emergence of the first autonomous robo-taxi fleets in big cities. That will probably progress over the next 10 years. And I think in 15 years, we'll be at the point where most, if not all, traffic in big cities is by robo-taxis, which will relieve congestion, reduce travel times, increase safety, and so forth. Uh, in the residential or rural areas and on the interstates, we'll continue to have cars as we know them, but with increasing degrees of self-driving to where, you know, get yourself to the freeway, hit the cruise control button, and then relax and it'll take you as far as you want to go. And the ultimate future, say 25 to 30 years out, it's all going to be autonomous in the cities and out in the country and 
human-driven cars will be relegated to museums or driving parks or off-road venues where people can drive in the desert if they want to. It'll, it'll go the way of the horse. You know, the horse used to be the prime mover. The horse has now gone off the streets, but it, it leads a nice existence in uh, horse stables, dude ranches, and so forth. And uh, that's going to what that's going to be what happens to the human-driven car. Well, that was much more thoughtful and interesting and futuristic thinking. I think that uh, I don't believe I don't believe that um, that cars will be full autonomous. In other words, there will be no wheel. I'm sitting in the back, and all cars eventually switch to that because of human-made roads. Now, if there were flying cars, like flying airplanes, and it would be much easier to navigate them through nature, so to speak. I don't believe that. Obviously, I'm driving in a car right now that has autopilot, that has adaptive cruise control and, and things like that. But it still requires man intervention, humans intervention. Uh, and of course the technology will uh, continue to improve and all that but to have it absolutely full autonomous with like uh, no um, human being interfere at all it's all by itself um, I, I, I don't think it's possible I, I personally don't think it's possible I, I'm not the only one who thinks so uh, uh, Steve uh, uh, Wozniak the co-founder of, uh, of Apple talked about it in a very interesting video. Now, there will be a lot more autonomous features, but complete and total and full autonomous drive, uh, driverless, no wheel. I, I, I have a hard time believing that it will happen. I, I, I don't think so, but I would love to be wrong. That would be such an economy. That would be such... Uh, 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 it's like the, the revolution between the horse and the car. You know, nobody ever thought that it would be anywhere, any other way. Anyway, I would love to know what you think. Let me know what you think. Meanwhile, don't forget to subscribe. Help me change the world one electric car at a time. And support this channel. I'm becoming a patron. I'll see you tomorrow with another video.